Here's a subject in a man to intrigue you. Uh, the country's going wild now with reports of uh, UFO, unidentified flying objects. They're going all over the place. Uh, recently, we had a guest on the show, Frank Edwards, who is convinced UFOs are from another planet. And he's written a book about it and has some pretty good arguments. Today, a UFO expert, Dr. Alan Hynek, he is director of Lindheimer Astronomical Research Center. That's at Northwestern University. And he's consultant to the Air Force on UFOs. He's here to tell us what he thinks of this phenomena. So here is Dr. Alan Hynek. <laughs> We're all going to hang on every word, Doctor. I tell you that. Uh, everywhere you, the paper you pick up, magazine, it's getting hotter, the whole issue. It is, it is, really. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I think that uh, I started this, you know, way back in 1948. And in... Uh, you started it. I mean, I started investigating things uh -huh. in 1948. <laughs> Uh, and then I think I would have taken just about any bet that by 1950 or 51 we would have forgotten the whole thing. There would have been something like, uh, oh, do you remember the, I'm sure you know, goldfish eating craze and so forth? Sure, and colleges so, and... And uh, it didn't. The reports have persisted. And not only have they persisted, but they're getting more and more. Are you not the one, Doctor, uh, recently in the uh, reports at the girls' school up in the Northwest that went up and said it was uh, gas or something. Well, uh, or it was a gas. <laughs> uh, he was gas. He, they all were gas. <laughs> no, uh, something, something you read. Well, well that, that was gas. But this is a very special case. Now, do you have about uh, half an hour to go into the chemistry of the situation? We don't uh, go anyway. <laughs> well, I think we'll, we'll postpone that unless you... Want to. All right, but, but no, 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 no. But all I want from you it was definitely, according to your investigation, a uh, a gas rising from a pond, right? This was a very likely explanation since the sightings occurred, both of them in Dexter and in Hillsdale. They both occurred in swamps. And, and a few of them have been near electrical plants. Yes. So no, no, no. We get sort of a great big electrolysis where the off, so. offshoots of uh, mm -hmm. uh, atoms of electricity might split the moisture into hydrogen and oxygen, and the two gases have separate colors. There's our chemistry. <laughs> yeah, but did you notice what the doctor said? Very good. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Just as the doctor said, and this often happens on this show, we have Walter Sullivan on occasion, the society, uh, society editor, the science editor, <laughs> we love that, of the New York Times. And he always says, yes, that's a likely explanation. Yeah. It's a very unusual explanation, I should say, Mervyn, because I think if the papers jumped on that uh, and said because this was a likely explanation in that case, it explained all UFOs. Well, it certainly doesn't. In fact, I think that was the only case we had in out of 10,000 cases. Why can I explain. not get a scientist, though, to say that is definitely the explanation? Well, because he's a scientist. Mm. He's bound to be cautious. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to weigh and consider. He mm -hmm. doesn't jump in and jump to conclusions unless he has some evidence. What do you think, Doctor, UFOs are? Well, first of all, they're reports. Yeah, I've got a little uh, thing here, it just so happens, uh, this sheet from the Dear George, or by George, Carl, uh, student wrote in, said, Dear George, I'm looking for proof that unidentified flying objects exist. Somebody says you had information on this matter. Do unidentified flying objects exist, and what exactly are they? Signed, student. George writes back, Dear student, unidentified flying objects do exist. Obviously, if we knew what they were, they would no longer be unidentified flying objects. They would be identified flying objects. Think, man, think. And that's exactly what the whole point is. UFOs are reports. And the great, great majority of them turn from UFOs into IFOs, identified flying objects. The great majority. There is, but for the unidentified ones. Yeah, let's, let's talk about the unidentified. What ones. are the possibilities? What might they be? Well, uh, the generally one. There's a great school that says they're all nonsense. Uh, then there are some people who will say they're secret devices. That we're, the government is testing something, and we really. Uh, they say, come off it, can't you really tell me now? Uh, I won't tell anybody, you know, 
but aren't they really secret devices? And as a third hypothesis, of course, as Frank Edwards seems to believe, that they are from other solar systems, or other planets at any rate. And there are little people are operating them, or some well intelligent. I've life never or... seen any new people operating them. No, no. But this is you can see the reports, and in these things, one must always remember that they are reports. We have no hardware, no pictures that show real detail. Nobody would have to be happier than me as an astronomer to have visits from other solar systems. It would be make it would make astronomy even more exciting than it is. Do you believe there's some other fat planet? I uh, think we must uh, keep that possibility open, yeah. Please, I ask, uh, in all of the artist concepts that I've seen of little men from outer space, they've been sort of uh, round or egg-shaped with several arms. And I was looking the at... The people or the, or the object? Whatever, whatever we saw, whatever entity, seemed to have that look. And just notice how similar that would look to... Uh, Surveyor, if some moon people should see this object land on the moon with all of these tentacles and all of these things, it would seem to them as though a strange thing should happen. Let's suppose at that same minute, one of our people from the space agency should press the button and it should leave the moon's surface by its own power. They would say, gee, we saw it land and turn around and take pictures and shoot off. And then somebody on the moon tries to explain that to them. Is it possible that just such technology could be taking place from other planets? It's certainly possible. But I think here we have to distinguish between the words possible and probable. The thing can be possible, scientifically possible, and yet not very probable. For instance, I want to know where are these things at 12 o'clock noon? So many of them are reported at night. Where are they hiding at, at, at high noon? Well, wouldn't you come in at night if you, if you well, were to go on another planet? Well, I'd have to hide, wouldn't I? No, no where are the stars at 12 o'clock noon? We know we're there. We can see them through telescopes. Uh, huh. What, uh, what, you are consultant to the Air Force. Mm -hmm. Is there any official word from the Air Force as, or curiosity, official curiosity from the Air Force? Do they put any, uh... Emphasis. Well, I have very recently, and so has the Scientific Advisory Board, advised the Air Force, really, that we should take the whole pro problem considerably more seriously than we have. What do they think? I think they're going to go along with me. Let me tell you about the caliber of people who are reporting these things, uh, Doctor. Uh, airline pilots have been reporting them. Yes. What do you think of the caliber? They're not nuts. Well, that's the point. You know, you, it wasn't Lincoln who said, I'm sure, that you can't call all of the people liars all of the time, but if you didn't, you should have said it. And that's the condition I'm sort of finding myself in. On one hand, we have no hardware. We have no real photographs. All the things seem to be against it. On the other hand, I cannot continue to call everybody a liar. We have not only pilots, but we have uh, directors of scientific laboratories that have reported these to me. We have, well, and take the great number of policemen. We have, I think, in general, policemen are uh, to be respected. It's certainly, certainly, in certain cases, the testimony of those very men would be sufficient to send the person to the chair or the gas chamber. And yet, why then should we not at least seriously take a look and listen to their testimony when they say they were followed by a very brilliant bright light. I think they, we should. They took pictures of that, excuse me. They, they, they took pictures of that particular one where the two highly respected policemen who were together in the Midwest, remember, and it was red with the flashing lights, and it, it followed the... I saw the picture. Saw the yeah. It was in the Saturday Evening Post. Oh. And they had taken pictures. Is that the reliable source? But they won't send it to the chair, but they're all fun. But uh, they, they, they have taken pictures of... of uh, it looked like the, the usual, you know, saucer, like two saucers together, but it seemed to have a series of lights. And of all the people who saw, the, uh, saw this thing, the, the majority of them were all highly respected people. And in one case, the policeman saw it, and he thought he was cracking up, and he went and got his superior officer, who came back, and they took, they did take pictures of it. It was red, and it was in some funny place, like a... I hate to say funny play. You, uh, did they see your show in Iowa? Yeah. Well, it was some darling play. I kept thinking, well, how come they're looking in Iowa and they were in New Hampshire and stuff too, and in little towns in New Hampshire, 
And I thought, gee, you'd think they'd come, it's, I know it's that big city snobbery, but you'd think they'd come to New York or go to Washington or no, Fort Knox or, you know, they don't know where they're going. Have you heard anything, Doctor, aside from the sightings, have you had any audible contact through electronic devices that would indicate there's something out there that we don't know about? Well, that's another thing that bothers me. We do have radar surveillance. The radars today are sufficiently good to pick up an explosion bolt in orbit. And when, you know, when a bolt, something falls off a Gemini or something, radars can pick this up. Therefore, if this is the dilemma, this is the real problem that puzzles me, and I think why we should look at it more carefully. Admitting that I've been very much a skeptic all along, and I've you know, generally considered a debunker, but all along, these uh, objects or these reports, they report, for instance, you have the problem is essentially this, that you have a dilemma between the lack of tangible evidence and you have the reports of reputable, good people. Nothing has ever been recorded on radar? There are, yes, there are reports, many reports of sightings on radar, but uh, there are also many denials. It's very difficult to trace back and find out whether it actually was seen or not. Is it possible that if they have this equipment and this, you know, ability, you know, assuming, I, I, would, I would like to think personally that they really were, you know, from other planets, I really would, that if they had this you know, knowledge and put it to this kind of use, would they not then conceivably have something that could wipe out, you know, would, uh, would uh, something to deter their signal from all the way? Yeah, yeah. Very difficult if, they're, if they have any metal. But, maybe um, they don't have, maybe they don't have metal. Maybe it's all plastic. They come from a planet where metal is not part of matter. Well, it's becoming very archaic now, metal. Everything's in uh, plastic. I'm sorry to say it's all right. That's all right. Yeah. It's okay with What are these bags you brought on? Oh, uh, those are simply to show that the part of the static or part of the noise, you see, part of the IFO, is those that the UFOs that very quickly become IFOs, identified flying objects. We have some hoaxes, not many, but uh, here is one in Glassboro, New Jersey, which uh, we spent a lot of time on. And finally, after all this bunk in the middle of it, we found this. It says, Black Cat is a firecracker. And I don't think they're making black cat firecrackers on Mars. Um, but it was picked up in this one. Two grade school students, 11-year-old 11, 11 students, reported this to their science teacher and said they had found this, that it had fell, this had fallen from the air. Turns out to be an extrusion from a nylon machine. Mm -hmm. A reject oh. from a bunch of old socks. A bunch of old socks. Sure. Well, those is <laughs> what you're wearing out there, ladies. <laughs> you see, these, there are, however, I must say, there are not many of these. You would think there'd be many more hoaxes, but there aren't. Do we ever hear reports from other nations? Why is everything coming from America? Is there this, isn't. It isn't at all. Are there, oh, other countries are reporting. It's, it's a global phenomenon, completely global. They started, as a matter of fact, in Sweden, not in here, in 1946 in Sweden. And uh, let's go over the countries. Well, England has more UFOs per square mile than we do. Of course, we have more square miles. But um, France had a tremendous wave in 1954. Brazil, Argentina, Australia, Japan. Spain. I'm not sure about Russia. They wouldn't tell us anyway. But you say 1946 was the first? Mm hmm But I thought of the modern wave. Yes, because aren't these listed in history? Yes, there are always, there always have been sightings, unexplained sightings in the sky. Clear back, except that the reporting was not very good in those days. And uh, you thought of we. Uh, yeah, that may have been a flying saucer. Yeah, yeah. What do you think is eventually going to happen? Are you... Uh, well, I'm seriously proposing, after all these years of thinking about it, uh, I'm perhaps... Uh, have been rather cautious. But I think now it's high time that um, civilian scientists took a solid look at this, that we have... I'd like to actually propose a civilian scientist research center for the study of the UFO phenomenon. And by the UFO phenomenon, I mean not only the reports, but the kinds of people who make the reports and the general study of the public interest. And I would not have just physical scientists, astronomers and so forth on it, but I think we should also have psychologists and people who are well versed in investigative techniques. 
In other words, I think the time has come when we should give a good, solid, scientific look at this thing. Interesting. Good. Good for you, Doctor. We'll be right back. <laughs>